All right, guys, uh, back again with another video. So today uh, I thought I'd show you a new piece of hardware that I've uh, recently acquired for my Amiga 500. Now, uh, you guys may remember about a year or so ago, I did a, um, a video on getting an Amiga 500 online using a Raspberry Pi. And uh, I've basically got all the bits and pieces uh, to, to make that work here in front of me. So I've got the Raspberry Pi device and the five volt power supply for it, the uh, serial RS-232 null modem cable with the um, RS-232 to USB converter and uh, just a USB cable and uh, the solution worked pretty well, it, uh, if you recall it, it plugged into the serial device and um, it was fairly slow, you know, it, it had to utilize the Amiga serial port and uh, speeds of up to 19 uh, 1200 board or BPS so pretty slow um, but it did the job so today uh, I thought I'd show you something that I just received in the mail and um, it's this thing and I'll move this aside yeah this is called a flip box and it's an Arduino based device that allows you to connect uh, your Amiga 500 or suitable classic low-end Amigas to the Ethernet and uh, the cool part about this device is rather than using serial it uses your parallel port which means um, the speeds would be a lot more faster than the serial device with the uh, Raspberry Pi and you can also see that um, there's a lot less as far as wiring goes so all we really need to do to make this device work is um, give it uh, some power here and uh, it takes a uh, 5 volt power supply and plugs into the uh, parallel port as mentioned and um, then we've got our Ethernet cable on the back here and obviously there's some configuration we do need to do on the Amiga side to make it work but uh, what I wanted to do is I just got this device today in the mail so uh, we're going to go through this together set this up and um, configure it and do some speed tests and see how well it works um, if you're interested uh, I'll leave a link in the description below with the particular website that this device um, uh, was based on and you can actually build your own if you're uh, pretty tech savvy it goes through the hardware requirements and the schematics to actually build your own device um, I kind of cheated a little bit and uh, picked one of these up on eBay and uh, there's a particular seller that's selling them uh, from the United States for I think for around 66 bucks for this particular device and it doesn't come with a power supply but um, what I'm going to do is find a 5 volt power supply that will fit into here the power supply socket or the power socket and um, I'll be right back and uh, we will power this thing up and get it hooked up to the A500 and work on setting this up and uh, seeing how well it performs but um, yeah I mean uh, ultimately this is a lot better solution for an Amiga 500 than the Raspberry Pi obviously the parallel speeds are a lot faster than the serial port speeds now they're not going to be um, Ethernet uh, type speeds but it will be a lot better than uh, what we've seen in the past so uh, don't go away, I'll be right back. I'll find a uh, power supply, dig through a couple of boxes in the garage and we'll be right back and uh, we'll get this thing powered on and uh, we'll do some speed tests. Okay, so uh, what we're doing now is we've plugged our flip box into our parallel port in the back of the Amiga and uh, we've got our power connected. I'm just gonna plug the power into the wall socket. So just bear with me for a sec, folks, while we get that done. And it's a good sign we've got some uh, activity here on the uh, device. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's uh, lit green there. So we've got some power connected. It looks like it's up and running. So now going to put the camera back down just going to uh, get a Ethernet cable and turn the device on and then we'll uh, set up the uh, Miami and the drivers and hopefully uh, see this thing up and running so actually what I'm going to do is just pause here grab an Ethernet cable for the back here because I have misplaced one I'll have to run down into the garage to get one so I'll be right back I'll plug an Ethernet cable in and we'll power it on and uh, we'll get this thing configured be right back all right so we got our Ethernet cable finally just had to run down to the garage grab one sometimes they're uh, 
not easy to find in my household. So we're going to just plug this into our router over here. Alright, so we got all that hooked up and I'm just going to mount the uh, camera on the tripod while we power this thing on. But uh, yeah, I'll pause again here real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're on the uh, Plitbox uh, website and this is uh, Lalafar's uh, blog and this is basically the guy that actually has designed this particular piece of hardware and um, what we want to do now is download the uh, latest version of the software which is 0.6 and this will have the particular device driver that we need for um, uh, getting the uh, Plitbox configured on the Amiga side. So we're going to go ahead and just download this particular file here. But uh, while we're on this particular page, I'll leave a link in the description below, but it will go through uh, how to build one of these yourself if you're uh, tech savvy and uh, how to uh, flash the firmware on it and set it all up. It's a very comprehensive guide and shows you how to configure everything. Um, also on the Amiga side, how to configure the TCP IP stack that um, you're going to want to uh, use on the Amiga side. And uh, I'm having some trouble with my compact flash device being read here on the on my PC. Uh, let me just plug it in and unplug it. Having some issues getting to read. All right, so here's our compact flash device. It's all uh, mounted. So we're gonna actually what we're gonna do is just uh, copy it into a folder here. But uh, we'll just we'll grab all three of these versions and just drag them in. Uh, yeah, it's complaining that I've got too many folders in the root folder. So what I'm going to do is just throw it into another one here. It doesn't really matter which one. I'll just throw it into the ADOOM folder just for giggles. And there are my three files. So now we're going to basically move back to the Amiga side. I'm just going to eject this drive. And let's go back over to the Amiga. Let me just uh, zoom the camera out. And we're going to mount our compact flash device into our ACA 500. Even though it says do not hot swap the uh, auxiliary uh, card, I do it all the time and I have no issues with it at all. So, uh, but I will say that you know your mileage may vary there. Um, you know I'm not responsible for damaged uh, compact flash devices, but it does certainly work for me. So, um, in any case, let's go into our work partition and I'm just going to do a, a standard CLI copy. In fact, let's use directory opus to do it instead. No, actually, let's let's use the CLI because uh, we have to rename the file. So let's go into our ADOOM folder and we should see our Plitbox devices. So we're just going to basically copy Plitbox and we'll take the O2O version and we want to copy it to We want to copy it to our dev.network drive or uh, folder. So devs networks and we want to call it plitbox.device. So now we have our plitbox device. So the next thing we need to do is configure our TCP IP stack. So uh, we're going to go into Miami and set that up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, configure our TCP IP stack. In this case, it's going to be our Miami. So we're going to go into our Miami folder and basically we've got our default um, settings and that was previously from the Raspberry Pi um, configuration we did. So we're going to go ahead and just basically delete that and then go into Miami DX here and create a new one. And what we want to do is go into uh, hardware and click on new Ethernet and select the driver and select the Plitbox device and call this uh, device Plitbox. You can call it anything you like, it doesn't really matter. And go into sign of two parameters and if you do a query device and your uh, MAC address gets resolved, it's a good sign that the actual um, hardware is plugged in appropriately and working. Click OK. And then we're going to ignore dialer, we don't need that. Go into interfaces and click on new and select Ethernet. And keep this as internet 
click OK and then select uh, the Plitbox device that you configured previously and here this is where you set up your IP addresses and your netmask and your gateway now um, you could use a DHCP um, setup but in my experience um, setting up a static IP address is the way to go uh, I've had no, nothing but issues trying to set up DHCP on Miami um, I, I've heard that uh, Roadshow, the new, the latest TCP IP stack will work pretty well with DHCP but um, in any case let's uh, just go with what we know so let's give this an IP address and of course this IP address will change depending on the network that you have in your local configuration but I'm on a 192.168.2 IP address range and uh, let's go ahead and click OK and the next thing to do here is go to databases and select DNS servers go ahead and add your DNS servers into this and I usually give uh, a DNS server entry as the same IP address as my local gateway or router as well just so that the, um, the device knows to use that router to get out to the DNS and I think that's really all we need to do um, let's go ahead and save as defaults and create an icon as well and the only other thing we want to do now is take this online now um, in Miami if you click online nothing's going to happen you have to actually make this the default online setting so if you go ahead and click on GUI default here that should uh, be enough to click on the online button. Now let's take this online and see what happens. Now it says we're online here so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and see if we can ping uh, our local gateway device or our local gateway server I guess. Hmm nothing's happening. Uh, I wonder why. Now there is actually a reset button on the device itself. Let me go ahead and actually just click that see what happens. doesn't seem to be pinging the local router for some reason uh, I can see uh, flashing activity on the back of the unit here so it looks like it's at least trying to send packets out I'm going to go ahead and restart the Amiga and see if that actually makes any difference let's give that a try uh, the parallel port may be in some uh, weird state so let's just go ahead and save our defaults and I'm just going to go ahead and restart this thing. See what happens. Internet Miami. Now if we click on our defaults it should take our defaults that we had set previously. Let's just make sure. Yep. bring this online and see what happens now okay so just needed a reboot I guess for the uh, parallel port to refresh itself so now we are pinging our local gateway device so that's a good sign let's see if we can ping out to Google and we can so uh, we've got an established connection here so let's uh, fire up an internet browser and see how fast this thing is now unfortunately I don't have my Raspberry Pi uh, hooked up so I can do some speed comparisons but um, uh, remember we're, we're locked into the serial port speeds uh, which will be a maximum of I guess around 1900 uh, and two, uh, 19,200 characters per second or bits per second so um, shouldn't get any faster than that um, at least on a stock Amiga 500 machine. Now let's go ahead and fire up eyebrows and take a look at uh, some performance. Uh, 
I haven't run this uh, program in a while, so let's uh, just go to Amiga World. And uh, that's actually uh, loading quite quickly. Um, again, it's it's hard to to compare um, against the Raspberry Pi setup that we used to have, but um, pretty quick loading times. Um, let's check out uh, Mega.org as well. And uh, one of the other things we'll do here is just do a um, a download test and see how fast we can download a file from Eminet. This is Mega.org. But uh, good, good performances, or good performance, good speeds. So one final test here we're going to do is go into amunet.net. And we'll pick a, um, a download that has a couple of megs. We don't want to be sitting here for too much time. Uh, this is a two meg download. This one would be pretty good. Let's let's go ahead with that one. Let's do let's actually let's do the eight meg download and see how fast that is. So I'm going to click on this SQL man download. It's an eight point one meg download. We're just going to take it to our RAM disk and see how fast this thing actually goes. There's our speed. It's uh, currently at. Uh, well, it's at 50k a second there. It's actually uh, very good speeds, all things considered. That's still going on in the background. Speeds has dropped slightly. And let's just go on to uh, the EAB IRC server. But yeah, I mean, uh, pretty good speeds. I mean, obviously it's it's not anywhere near as good as a dedicated uh, Ethernet device, uh, wireless network card on A1200, or um, you know something like an Xsurf on the A3000, A4000 type solution. But um, certainly much much improved over the uh, serial device uh, solution that we had in the previous video. And this download is just about finished. So, you know, it's it's not super fast, but for what it is, it's um, about as good as you're gonna get on a, a stock A500 or an A500 uh, setup. Obviously on an A600, you've got the PCM CIA port and the option to use a wide PCM CIA card or a wireless one. But um, on an A500, I think the, um, the clip box is certainly a very, very good solution to use. and. Um, I personally know that uh, I'm going to retire my Raspberry Pi setup in favor of this. This is an awesome solution. If you're interested in getting your Amiga 500 online, uh, certainly worth checking out. As mentioned, I will leave a link in the description below of the particular web page where you can find all the information you need about this solution. Uh, also, if you kind of want to cheat and take the, the easy option like what I did, uh, there's a particular seller on eBay that's actually selling these at the moment. So certainly recommend them if you want to um, get your uh, Amiga 500 online. Very, very cool setup. And uh, that's all I got for today, guys. Uh, I will catch you on the next video. Bye for now.